welcome to you all to this panel discussion revolving around the most pressing issue in the state country and the world today the covid-19 pandemic this panel discussion organized by the economics club of vvms shri damodar college of commerce and economics in association with one of goa's leading media houses prudent media seeks to find answers to the most pertinent question for us right now is covid-19 a reset button for the goan economy the covid-19 pandemic has spread with alarming speed infecting millions and bringing economic activity to a near standstill as most countries impose tight restrictions on movement to halt the speed of the virus as the health and human toll grows the economic damage is extremely evident and represents the largest economic shock the world has experienced in decades as economies across the world flounder what does this mean for goa let me introduce our panelists for today we have with us mr amit chopra a self taught professional in the fields of real estate consultancy and construction he is the director at escala escala realty india and currently the president of the goa association of realtors thank you mr chopra for being with us today we also are privileged to have with us mr kirit maganlal the founder and ceo of the maxins group a chain of retail stores spread across different locations in goa it's a pleasure to have you here mr maganlal also here with us is dr sangam kurade the chairman and managing director of dr kurade's group of companies one of the largest and oldest mushroom industry in india i extend my warm welcome to you dr kurade joining us today is ms tejashri pai the ceo at chogle industries private limited thank you ms tejashri pai for taking the time to be with us we are also grateful to have with us mr nilesh shah the president of the travel and tourism association of goa a veteran in travel and trade mr shah is a partner and founder of purushottam bhagwan and associates a 28 year old travel and tour company welcome mr shah i extend a warm welcome to mr serao francis socorro the managing director at crosscraft event management mr socorro's radiant persona hands on approach humility sheer creativity and experience of many successful national and international events over the years positions him as one of the front runners in india's wedding management sector thank you mr socorro for being with us today i also extend a hearty welcome to mr anthony gaskill the convener of the cii goa logistics panel he is also the director at centrans shipping private limited and casa sarai private limited thank you for taking the time to be with us mr gaskill we are fortunate to have among us today mr nitin kunkolekar an acclaimed industrialist in the state of goa and the dynamic president of vidya vikas mandal welcome sir once again i heartily welcome all the illustrious members of our panel and wish them a fruitful discussion mr pramod acharya the director and editor of prudent media will be moderating today's discussion i request mr pramod acharya to kindly take over yeah, thanks sir uh, hello everybody i am not wasting much of time but i'll straight away dive into the discussion because i have so many uh, eminent personalities on the channel that i am the least stressed guy on the, on in this entire frame because usually i need to do lot of study and all today i don't because all of you are here so my my job is practically done so i won't waste any time i'll straight dive uh, to go to nitin uh, nitin opening remarks from you we are keeping it very simple so opening remarks for 
within two minutes, everybody, and then we'll go into the discussion. So, Nitin, I'll start with you. Opening remarks. When you look at this topic, uh, are you seeing any signs of revival? Or we are still into the first phase, second phase kind of conundrum, and we do not know where we are heading. Thank you, thank you, Pranod. And uh, first of all, let me welcome uh, you all and uh, to this lovely or event organized by Damodar uh, College. Uh, and uh, also, I thank you for uh, taking a lead in this regard, and agreeing to moderate as well as to uh, cover it in uh, your and. Very importantly, uh, we have a galaxy of, uh, I mean, the people who are like the stalwarts in their line. And I must also appreciate the role played by each one of them in their field, especially when it comes to, uh, to like, for example, a very accomplished person in retail. And I've seen his passion in retail for so many years. I welcome uh, Kirit Bai for this uh, event. Darao has been again a stalwart. He's not only in event management, but he's a creator now. I've been associated with him very closely. A lot of new initiatives for Goa are being planned from a post COVID uh, perspective. How to take Goa as a new event destination in terms of emerging situations. He has been working very hard on that. Anthony is indeed driving my dream, which 2006 we had proposed about Goa Logistic Hub. And somewhere in 2010, I met Anthony. And since then, I have seen in a very organized way, he has been leading the moment of driving logistics sector of Goa on all multimodal uh, areas from land, sea, rail, and uh, air. So he has been a very uh, important personality for the state of Goa as far as logistics is concerned. And very passionate about driving Goa as a, a logistic hub, which is the of Goa. After six laning of the road that happens, Goa would certainly get into a new mode. And uh, Amit is a stalwart in real estate. He has been doing exceedingly well. Nilesh leads TTAG, the lead institution, and he himself is into this uh, uh, industry for long. And... Uh, now, I think most of you are, I hope I have not missed out on anybody. Uh, so the whole purpose is, what, uh, Sangam, my dearest friend, how can I miss you? Sangam and Tejasvi, uh, Tejasri, Sangam has really made Goa proud in the field of agriculture. If at all Goa has to be seen as a success story in agriculture, and our credit goes to my dear friend Sangam. He has one of the most outstanding state of art uh, uh, mushroom uh, processing plant and I think he has, uh, he has almost seven plants there actually he has shown me this uh, I've been there so proud of you Sangam and Tejasri you are indeed a very good success story uh, Maruti and Chogule Industries have done exceedingly well in this automobile sector in Goa and all credit to you for that and that is where we requested uh, your presence and you are the first person who will tell us the sentiments, like how the spending has come up. So is COVID-19 a reset button? Yes, certainly. The new definitions of businesses are going to emerge. People are hungry. The hunger for business and opportunities will always remain. But the new rules and opportunities are being set up. Even in pharmaceuticals, at one time we thought pharmaceuticals would be a benefiting out of COVID, but to some extent, a segment of pharmaceutical which was prescription based have been impacted, but a new element of uh, uh, pharmaceutical have been coming up in uh, uh, market. Uh, Kirit, I'm sure Goa is going to be hungry and you will be feeding all of us. So you are another person who are uh, closely connected with different aspects. So we need, our idea at Damodar College is to get views of the experts and try and simulate these views, understand the views and come out with a paper which can help in creating a new dimension to the state of Goa. I was part of uh, economic revival committee. Government also has created a bureaucrats committee for Swayampurna or Atmanirbhar Goa. It's a very good attempt taking development to the villages, educate people in the villages. And it has to be an integrated effort. And I think we should now try identifying new areas of growth, new opportunities of growth. 
you look at it sector online business which never used to happen to that extent today it has caught up very well and it's going to stay for long the new aspects in manufacturing are coming up the manufacturing would definitely move from assembly led uh, businesses to complete end to end businesses exports led growth could become a new feature post covid and the government is really working hard on that so i would actually uh, request you all to contribute your views and help us to come out with a paper which can benefit each one of the stakeholders in goa as a whole so i thank you for the opportunity by inviting me here and i'm sure uh, uh, we will come out with something in concrete i'm grateful to you all for your presence as well thank you have a nice day yeah thanks thanks nitin uh... I immediately go first to Kirit Bai because ultimately you are one person. I think we all are dependent upon. So let's start with that person, <laughs> bread and butter, and Kirit Bai will move ahead. Uh, we have been talking for last so many months, and uh, you have been observing the change in spending pattern. How does it look now? People are still wary about uh, opening up their wallets, or there is still that uh, cautious approach. Okay. let's let's spend only on need right now let's see the extravagant things later uh, how do you analyze the trend okay so uh, earlier when you mentioned reset i first heard it as recess button <laughs> and that is what the world economy is in today you know it's a sort of a correction mode from the hectic activity of industrialization and the pace of growth that has developed over the past decade looking back at these past 7 months we wonder what went wrong you know to bring us to this uh, particular state that we are in today 6 months of pure inaction a period of a dying economy and an era of extreme uncertainty i remember pramod at one of our earlier interactions who had asked me how much did i think that gdp would suffer in that quarter and i had mentioned 30% it sounded insane at that particular time but economic growth did suffer very close to that figure in that quarter gdp numbers dropped nearly 24% and that i think was one of the worst ever quarters in modern history of our country so we were in one of those rare businesses that survived during this lockdown crisis while most stayed indoors for fear of corona virus we were forced to come in contact with hundreds of customers vendors people from all walks of life during those particular days and grocery shops and supermarkets were working at an insane pace to ensure that households were getting their kitchen supplies when everything around them was shut so we were just a handful of folks you know servicing a multitude of people aged infirm and the sick delivering them goods at home through whatever means that were available to us and yes the country at that time did survive and it passed through that crisis but it taught us all a lesson and that there is no high and mighty an invisible enemy can bring us down to our knees and cripple our way of life so it also taught us another thing uh, from it taught us a lot of resilience that nothing can permanently keep you down and this indomitable spirit that we have shall survive through even the worst of a crisis and so now the button has been reset recent news says that gst collections have crossed the 1 lakh crore mark uh, teja will agree that uh, car and motorcycle sales have surpassed uh, industry expectations digital transactions have hit a record high the mood is optimistic and the festive fervor which is now gathering force is at its peak but yes the recess button is still on in certain sectors like in hospitality like in education like in entertainment this will take time to recover and we need to tread cautiously here you know lest we get hit by a second whammy look at it this way and i keep saying this you know a lot of times in my talks the world may want to think that 2020 did not exist at all the effects may have put us back by a decade you know which means that we shall now have to live the lives the way our parents live so no excessive partying or socializing no crunching of deadlines no crazy travel itineraries less of stress more of mental balance and what's wrong with that i mean that generation was never worse so so it kept families together it kept the world sane for all of us so my take here pramod is we were brought into this world to make it a safer and a more habitable place we had forgotten that down the line we are being reminded it yeah very 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 important point kid bhai i'll come to that in the second part i'll take that thread in the second part 
I will straight away go to Tejasri Pai. Um, you are the second denominator of gauging whether we are spending. So, and, and with the festive season, the Sahara is over. So, you may have the primary figures to tell us whether people are back into festive mode and saying, okay, let's go out, let's spend, let's purchase or they are still holding back. So, between the Dasera and Diwali, what's your assessment? Uh, uh, as far as automobile industry is concerned, first quarter, that is uh, April, May and June, we were, uh, you can say it was zero. What started actually was in the month of July because uh, Ganpati was at the corner in August. And uh, in Goa, we do three festivals very well. That is uh, Gudi Padwa, Dashera and uh, Ganesh Chaturthi. But what happened, Ganesh Chaturthi, we uh, didn't see that kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, actual uh, people coming and buying the car. But yes, Dashera, uh, there was a lot of inquiries. People have started moving in. Basically, uh, what picked up was uh, entry-level cars. The smaller cars like Alto, I-10, uh, you know, uh, Expresso, Celerio, the smaller cars. And uh, the, seg uh, the segment people, this segment of people who were buying was uh, government uh, employees, uh, the corporates and the pharma companies. This was basically because what the strategy says, there was no salary cut for these people, this, this segment people. We have lost a huge market in uh, taxi segment. Uh, on an average, last year we used to sell, the whole industry used to sell around 1,600 cars a month, which uh, out of that around 500 to 600 cars used to be taxi every month, which has uh, gone to zero. So this will help us only if the tourism industry changes. Mm -hmm. And Dashera was quite good for every dealer, I would say. The auto industry in Goa has uh, shown negative growth by 48%. But in the month of October, there was a growth of 3% in the industry. And everybody did well. Uh, I would say not the luxury cars, but the, all the other dealers uh, did quite uh, a good uh, uh, performance. Yeah. So, and now uh, as dom domestic tourists have started coming in Goa, we expect good sales to happen and our, even our taxi segment should uh, start working. What in this uh, pandemic uh, time, what we did, we kept all our after sales services going, mainly our workshop, which really helped not only us, but all the government department employees and the police department. Police department has almost 200 cars which are of us and on-road service was provided to them all 24 by 7. And what I think if long-term strategies will help us to move in a better way, the way we as Chauglais, our long-term strategies and the system in place have helped us to stand strong. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot, ma'am. I'll go to uh, Sarao now. Sarao, uh, very frankly, I think this is uh, the, the recess that Kirit Bhai mentioned. I think uh, that primarily applies to your segment also. Uh, when do you see that recess getting over? And when we are talking about, when we are looking at the European countries going back into lockdowns, talking about this second wave, more severe with higher numbers, uh, what is your frank assessment of, of as far as that recess in the luxury segment is concerned? Thank you for having me here. Um, I would say, um, you know, we have a huge luxury segment, which is uh, internal and um, uh, domestic and international. Um, we cannot uh, undercharge the luxury segment that is existing within us. And um, this uh, pandemic uh, has paused us to rethink that uh, how we could cater to the luxury segment within the country. And today we got a lot of requests that has been floating around where people want to come with their own charter. They want their own boutique um, uh, property, which they don't want with other guests. They want to do very private functions. They want to do some very private celebration 
um, not to, uh, I don't mean the uh, private means away from media, but uh, private within themselves. They like to be secure. And if, you know, so we are not so we are not going to see those me, me, mega gala weddings with 150 rooms bookings and all that's what you're saying no we already have those 150 room booking coming back yeah. you know and uh, we have a very short morat um, between november and december and uh, as of yesterday weddings have started with 200 people in goa but um, uh, it's not as the um, uh, the way you used to take it up earlier you have to be cautious. You have to have a teamwork between the guests, the management of the venues and your own uh, staff that everything works safely because one um, uh, spark from here that can collapse the entire economy again. The one which is just taking steps forward. Yeah, I think very, very important. We'll, we'll go deeper into it in our next segment. Uh, Amit, uh, how do you looking at the real estate segment? Because Two things, one, the domestic purchase and second, uh, the investment that is coming in from outside the state. How do you evaluate both these things uh, post these six months? Hi Pramod, uh, yeah. I'll just go a little behind. Along with the rest of the segments, we were probably the worst hit. Of course, at that time itself in March, early and just end of March, people had started talking of doomsdays and we had written uh, some there were some articles and other things and I had predicted that Goa will be the first to recover at least in real estate and the luxury segment. Long time back I have been talking on Goa requires to reinvent itself specifically what we want to be. Do we want to be a mass destination or do we want to be a class destination? See the money comes in in the series which never gets hurt. The upper class, the class which has got money still has got money. They have got purchasing power. We initially saw in Goa zero sales for two months, zero rentals, and then suddenly the rental boom happened. But that was, you know, people stepping down, coming down for 50,000, 40,000, 1 lakh rentals to a little lower level, trying to reset themselves. And then past three months, we saw amazing amount of inquiries coming in across India and from Goa also. You will be shocked that we had a 500% growth in inquiries, 500% growth in inquiries. And sales from the last one and a half month have been amazing. A 500% growth vis-a-vis -vis last year, same period. Vis-a-vis -vis last year, same period, number of inquiries I'm talking of was hmm. the growth. Hmm. Now, let us talk about sales. The lower middle segment is slow. The middle segment is almost down, almost down. But the upper middle segment and luxury segment has been booming. 200% more sales more sale in the luxury segment has been seen in Goa. Plots are selling like anything. Last one and a half month, we have sold more plots than normally have been sold in the past year. Mm. This is the feedback from the market. Mm. Built up in the luxury segment and ready has been finished. Inventory is finished. Luxury segment inventory is no longer there. There are bookings now, which was never happening in that. But yes, this is because Goa has got a unique situation. Our friends in uh, tourism also affect us. So there was a, in real estate, there was a demand in tourism also for us. That unfortunately has been hit a bit. But now different things are coming in. You know, uh, boutique hotels, hotels uh, affording a little more space. People are looking at a little space. Work from home has become a norm. So we have had a lot of IT sector people wanting to shift to Goa because now IT companies are reinventing themselves. Instead of having a huge building, having a 20,000, 50,000 square foot space, they are moving to 5,000 square foot space with the staff working from home. So we are getting that kind of inquiries. A lot of people are looking to relocate from, you know, Bangalore, from Hyderabad to Goa. Uh, this is a new segment. People wanting to come in, take houses on rental for a six months, a year till they can buy their own houses out here. So that is another segment of growth we are witnessing. So we are seeing an amazing rebound. But yes, it has been a reset button because the kind of things that are selling have changed. Everybody has had to reinvent themselves. Yeah. We were one of them. And I hope that this rebound will help Goa come back, you know, very strongly. But everything, everything as everyone else has been saying has to be reset. We have to look like Kirat Bhai will say, 
earlier uh, deliveries was not a thing in goa now deliveries is, is on you know home deliveries have become a fact of life hmm. same way every segment is changing and i am sure like one something that will affect the uh, you know vehicle industry is simple people are preferring to have self drive vehicles the car rentals rather than taking a taxi on drive so you will see growth there the economy is rebounding hopefully if no second wave hits we will do very well and even if that wave hits if we are little cautious little careful reinvent our things i am seeing very strong growth and anthony will be the main guy leading the resurgence once the new airport comes in because logistics is the future for goa logistics and high end tourism will make goa a different kind of economy i directly go to anthony then so are you feeling this uh, resurgence happening or you are still preparing for it or looking at the numbers of manufacturing sector you are still worried worldwide now there's been a huge pick up container ship worldwide are all full and airlines are doing very well in their cargo movements um and in india particularly the very few containers available for export exporters are struggling to find containers to load their cargo right now so definitely there has been this rebound you know not only in india but also in other countries as well in terms of world trade but specifically for goa there are a lot of things on the anvil that are really going to you know develop the logistics sector as we focus on our recent logistics conference the mopar airport is coming up going full steam ahead and not only mopar airport there are improvements coming up at dadan airport so from the air freight perspective you know things are happening there we're trying to get a cargo freighter service coming into dublin right now and if that comes that will be like a big game changer for the exporters in goa then we've got the enhancement of the bali icd in south goa which uh, before too long will be able to cater for export and import cargo so far it's only handling domestic traffic and then the recent uh, opening of the konkan maritime cluster uh, which was inaugurated uh, not a few days ago that is a potential game changer for goa in terms of reviving the whole maritime sector and goa has this you know low hanging fruit of really becoming um, a hub for you know maritime yeah. services and construction so there are a lot of things going on which um, you know lead to a bright future uh, for logistics and as <clears throat> has been touched on there's a whole new segment opening up of this domestic or internal logistics in goa as people are doing you know home deliveries and so on so you know the whole focus can shift shift and change and with the improvements in the road network i see you know good potential for like local employment and in, in just in, you know internal logistics even within goa so i think all in all the bright future lies ahead yeah uh sangam bab uh, i think during that initial lockdown even uh, your products were kind of saviors for many and you you are in an industry where you are a combination of both primary as well as secondary how do you look at the reset factor i think uh, thank you for your uh, generosity but uh, though we had a lot of problems in the initial first quarter but uh, and i'm glad to hear so many panelists saying good things about the economy uh, personally speaking i think there is a lot of pent up demand in the economy that's why uh this problem uh, this suddenly you are finding the growth and a uh, boom in demand whether automotive the sector and everything else but we'll take that in the later discussions uh the fact remains in our sector we have seen a boom we have a 30% growth uh in our demand for the product but we have a supply chain problem the prices of all the packaging and uh, and transport is going up uh and uh, but uh i feel the real uh, issue will not be the myopic uh, business of uh, we have to think on the agriculture point of view agriculture in goa uh, has been on a on a on a high a lot of people have been displaced uh, and they have gone back to agriculture but at the same time big projects of agriculture that is sanjeevni sakar karkhana you know are have been closed down so there is a, a little skepticism there whether it will be sustained in the next coming uh, times to come i think uh, the third, final quarter of this year will be the primary focus where the real uh, unless the second pandemic hits or something else happens uh, i think we should be able to maintain this steady growth but 
from the goal economy and the reset point of view on a holistic perspective pramod i want to uh, ask you are we goans ready for the reset the the that might what this is that i think the panelists would think yes there is a pent up demand which is showing up there is a green shoots and everything third la final quarter will show up but is there a reset are we allowing for the big projects to come in into goa whether be electrical or whether be transport or whether be um, your educational projects unless the big projects are allowed the goan economy will the jobs will not be created and the economy will not be boom in the in the future so whether it is covid pandemic yes another year or so will be back on the normal uh, and will be growing but is that the real answer for the goan economy that is a question and that's a moot point i think everybody should think about Uh, as far as the industry is concerned, as you are aware, that uh, as a as our tourism industry, we have realized that COVID is here to stay, and uh, right now all of us are on the survival mode, which may be any segment of the industry. So basically, looking into that aspect, uh, some green shoots have been seen, especially on the high-end segments. So on the all five-star hotels and four-star hotels uh, are giving good value to the customers. So there is a lot of attractions uh, for. for the customers to come back to that segment uh like uh, if you see in the weekends you will find the most of the hotels in goa almost 70% 80% full uh the challenge is with the smaller hotels even after government giving opening in from month of august after of total 4000 hotels plus only thousands have 1000 hotel have opened back open up now uh, but the room wise almost 50% of the rooms are open in goa uh it is going to be very challenging times and uh, uh it is it is very slow growth and lot of safety aspects has to look into each segment uh even now casinos have been allowed so we we uh, hope that uh, hotels in penjim will revive with uh, casinos uh, coming back uh secondly as far as the overall picture growth is concerned i think uh, uh, we are very optimistic and very positive about it a uh, lot of revenge tourism happened when the pandemic uh, uh, that slowed down especially in europe and in india also you are seeing certain thing where the people wants to move out and travel in big number and with this goa is concerned i feel there's a lot of uh, opportunities uh, coming up for the employment in sense that uh, a lot of people have gone back and goans uh, persia and hospitality industry uh, work in hospitality industry abroad especially in the cruise liners and the uh, different uh, uh, hotels abroad so uh, being the job losses there they come back to goa and i think those opportunities will open in goa because in goa will there will be lot of uh, requirement of uh, workforce uh, in the various uh, hospitality uh, in industries in this to come mm-hmm. and with the overall uh, picture i think uh, i think uh, we should uh, pass this space and uh, there should be growth uh, in a uh, year year or so Uh, and to be frankly speaking coming back to the normal of the growth which we had uh, was, uh, as on uh, january month i think it will be take some time before we uh, reach uh, that level it may be in the airline industry or it may be in hotel industry or overall uh, tourism segment as a well. whole yeah thanks thanks tilesh uh, i'll quickly go to sara sara uh, just want to ask you one simple question because this debate has been whether health versus economy or health and economy and uh, and your industry is one industry where these sops because of the gatherings because of the large chunk of people coming together becomes very important have we solved this puzzle that are we in a zone where we can say okay health and economy and we are quite sorted about it we know what to do on ground uh, we know how to put safety measures in place and okay if not 100% at least 90% certain that we can have safe events with large gatherings right now you know i think um you can do a large event of say when i say large event mean social gathering like a mice or a wedding but not concert because in a mice and a wedding you can do 100% safe event because you know who are your guests you know what are each guest responsibility you know whom you are inviting and you would invite only those people who will keep you safe and will keep themselves safe but when you look at a concert like sanburn or anything um my first idea is not to show that uh, i oppose anything uh, you know all these functions are um, uh, most um, welcome to the state 
but uh, if there are no uh, authority monitoring this that could be a big big trouble yeah. so we did events we did showcase events we brought our entire industry of the event uh, association of goa and we did a complete protocol event to show everyone how we can do safe event and the, we have done so far a couple of events in goa i think absolutely with no problems so you are saying those mass concerts are out of the question for now at least till we have a health solution but these controlled ceremonies celebrations can take place effectively with all safety measures absolutely correct Absolutely. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Sarah. I'll go to Kirit Bhai. Kirit Bhai, one uh, gazal this time when we talk about all these things is the biggest sufferer in all this process is the middle class. Uh, I'll go to Tejasri Bhai also later on because she also mentioned it because luxury segment seems to be people had money, people waited for a while, but people are spending their money again. Uh, is your assessment the same? The biggest uh, sufferer right now is the middle class because of the wage cuts, job losses. The class that is holding back its spending is the middle class. So, to a very uh, large extent, Pramod, I uh, accept the fact that it is the middle class who are uh, suffering today. Uh, we see it all across our stores. Uh, we also see it uh, across people who have been aspiring to come to the higher class, but uh, whose aspirations today are held back just because they don't have enough money in their wallets. Uh, this is a trend that has kept on happening in the last six, seven months. Uh, but there is also a flip side to it. You know, you see so many new forms of businesses that have uh, uh, innovated. The type of businesses where people have gone into something which is going to maintain their own livelihood. So, talking about us, you know, we shall be ending FY 2021 on a very flat top line. And for the first time, I'm seeing that it's not such a bad thing. We have had to shut three of our outlets due to unviability resulting out of a number of factors. And we have had to push our new store growth projections by another year. We have had to overcome a, overcome a host of supply chain issues, manpower issues, issues of maintaining impeccable sanitization, hygiene across all our stores. It has not been easy and it has come to us all at a cost. But we have to keep changing because the middle class today is changing their requirements uh, what they need in a store are much different than what they were earlier fortunately the nature of our business is such that it has kept our cash flows going it has kept 150 families of our staff gainfully employed and kept hundreds and thousands of kitchen households running so we see these as huge positives but it pains us to see livelihoods being destroyed uh, uh, around us. So my family continues to shop for bread with the local cycle poder. Mm. You know, even though we pack and sell the most hygienic forms of dried fish, I still buy my suke bomil at the old man uh, who sells it by the corner side street. Uh, we must support these downtrodden and uh, all the legitimate businesses that have cropped up. So I. I think the middle class uh, is suffering. It's our job and duty to support them. Uh, Tejasri ma'am, your assessment is the same because you spoke about the entry level cars. So that makes it fairly certain that people do not want to go or spend on a model that, that, that is beyond their requirement. I can manage within this, let's spend only this. Luxury cars, I am quite sure that segment is not so adversely affected. But the middle class and because of the tourism, the taxi segment, again middle class, is the biggest sufferer. Yeah, Professor, what is the thing is, uh, today if you see, car is not a luxury anymore. Because the transport, local transportation in, in Goa is not very strong like other cities. So today having a, one car at least in a house is like a mandatory for people who can afford. Wherever the income where husband, wife, both the people are working in a family, they would uh, have one car. Uh, a, a smaller car people prefer because it comes within a budget of four to five lakhs. Yeah. And when the banks and the uh, financial institute are funding for 90% of loan and 95% of loan, definitely people look at these smaller cars. Today, investing in a car, 10 to 15 lakhs is uh, not really worth. That's what people say, uh, think. And today, every, every person is uh, thinking of spending wisely. 
I would say. Yeah, that's the that's the key word. Spending wisely. Now, how how that wisdom has changed from pre-lockdown to post-lockdown, we will come to that. But I go to Sangamba on the issue that he raised, and then uh, Anthony and Amit. Uh, Sangamba, you raise you raise the issue about the big projects and eventually the society uh, trying to take a very adversarial position. Uh, the the fundamental issue I think that is there in everybody's mind is. In, in terms of these big projects, what is the carrying capacity of a small state like Goa? Uh, how do you solve that puzzle? I think it's a, it's a, there is a dichotomy in this and uh, we cannot look and I think a lot has to do with the, a bit with the political will at one stage and the other stage is the, uh, the wise ethos of the, us as humans and us as Goans. Are we going to uh, look ourselves as only within Goa or uh, one of my points uh, to mention to you was uh, why are we looking from the Goan economy? It is, we cannot look at just Goan economy unless the Goan economy is plugged to the Indian economy and Indian economy is plugged to the uh, global platforms. I think we are looking at a very small uh, tunnel view and myopic view here. So uh, I think a little political will and educating the people at the grassroots level because uh, uh, in today's day, day and times of social media, the WhatsApps and uh, uh, all kinds of uh, in fake news, or, I'm sorry you are in the media, but then I think uh, these days uh, the, uh, the fake news world has come from American... Uh, that, that is one of all also the biggest, biggest challenges. challenges. Yeah, so, so uh, <laughs> what kind of uh, uh, message goes out to the people? Uh, that education has to be done at the grassroots level, as well as the strong political will on both sides, and see what is good and what is not. Sir, I'm, 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 I'm asking this question just precisely to get a proper perspective on one, one simple issue. Uh, how do we decide that this is the point where we stop? This is, this is enough because uh, I'll go to Nilesh also later on. What we saw in the tourism sector is the kind of growth it, it, it witnessed over a period of time. There are so many unwanted elements that, 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 got up, that became a part of that industry. Uh, very unwanted, very sinister, and very troubling. So, when we talk about growth of a sector, uh, how do we decide that, okay, this is desirable, this is undesirable? I don't think there is any black and white in that. I think it's full of gray. Uh, and it has to be a, and it has to be a time bound uh, measure. And education plays a very important, crucial element, whether educating through the media or educating through the newsprint or word of mouth. In Goa, we know everybody knows each other. The word of mouth is also important at the village level. I think uh, uh, I think it has to be a mix of everything rather than a, just a single point approach of blaming the politician or blaming anybody. Yeah. I think uh, politicians come from uh, us Goans only. We Absolutely. Only play it. So uh, so uh, uh, so we need to be educating ourselves also. It has see that what COVID has taught us from all is to look within ourselves as a business people, as human beings. And, and, and try to survive. The first instinct what came up on everybody's family and everybody's mind was to survive. That's why in my sector in food and agriculture, we did better because the points of sale went up tremendously. Every varo or every uh, road uh, side, uh, there was a food uh, outlet being opened up. There was an enterprise involved. So there is a positivity is there. So so, uh, so I think uh, it's a mixed bag. I don't think one can have a one clear answer when we can do and when we can stop. I yeah. think it's an ongoing process. Uh, uh, Anthony, uh, very important. Uh, how do we decide what is the carrying capacity of a small state like Goa? Because uh, eventually all, all, all arguments come down to that one simple question. Uh, how, how do you look at this uh, aspect? Point of view of you know, development, this has to happen. I mean, we can the Indian economy to grow and the Goan economy to grow, there has to be development and infrastructure put in place to cope with uh, you know, the aspirations of the people. I mean, simple case, if people want to have cars, then you have to have roads to put them on. So, you know, and if more goods are to be produced, then you have to have the infrastructure to, to move them around. So, um, definitely, you know, development has to take place. But I, I think, you know, if I compare, for example, with the UK, where I originally came from, I mean, in the UK, what I see is there is a very much a long-term planning process and projects are mooted long time in advance of actual construction starting. And 
all sorts of inputs are taken about the potential project from all the stakeholders. And then the projects are probably modified to some extent to take into account all the comments that are made. And then after a number of years, the project goes ahead. Here, what I see in India happens, projects sort of suddenly leap out of nowhere as a surprise. And, <laughs> and obviously, you know, objections can come up uh, because, you know, nobody was expecting that project to, to take place. And, and the views of the local people hasn't been taken into account. So I, I think the whole, you know, way of doing projects should change in India with a much more open mind about it and uh, bringing them into the project at an early stage. And, so they, you know, all these different views can be taken into account and the project modified accordingly. So then when it actually starts, I think everybody is happy with it. Yeah, very, 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 very pertinent point. Amit, I think your industry is one industry which has been a consistent victim of notorious activism. So, <laughs> I, I, I classify them into two categories, a genuine, genuine activism and notorious activism. So, how do you look at this? I'll, I'll just uh, build on what Anthony said. See, large projects are required. As Dr. Sangam rightly pointed out, we require large projects in Goa to build our economy. What kind of large projects is the question. Where they should be done is the second question. To educate people is very, very required because people have to understand development is to come. Otherwise, if we want to stay in the 18th century, we can stay there. We can choose to do that also. But then we have to take a choice. Problem is there is no planning. We don't plan what we want to do next uh, 20 years down the line, what we look at Goa. There is no view. There is a view of today. And unfortunately, there is a lot of resistance to good things also. Because those good things are forced upon people. That becomes a problem. Now, suddenly, Nijak, as uh, Anthony said, suddenly projects pop up. Like in Donapola, first there was an IT park. Then it was sought to be changed into a, a convention center come thing, which was a great idea. And now again, they are trying to do an IT park which will fail. Now, let me tell you, categorically, it will fail. There is a reason for it. Because they don't take on board the people who can give them correct advice on here. And advice given free is considered foolish. Why? Because IT sector requires a very low base of rental or free. You know, they can't invest into it because there are other overhead. And other states like uh, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Hyderabad, they gave them free uh, land. Here, we expect them to come and pay a land price of a total developed area in Goa and then expect them to build a, a thing which has a very uh, low paying uh, uh, you know, threshold. So unfortunately, it'll, it'll, it is going to be a failure. It will never happen. But And now the IT park protests, if they would have just done a placement a little better, it is something which would have been wonderful for Goa. Education, medical tourism, logistics and high-end tourism, uh, high-end homes, you know, lesser density uh, development is what Goa requires. We require to preserve Goa. Very, very important. I've been talking to people, telling them that Goa requires to be preserved. But development is going to happen. So we have to plan what is going to happen. Yeah. Unfortunately, as everybody here has pointed out, you know, that planning is what we are lacking on. I hope this reset button, this COVID gets our leaders to also think and come on board and, you know, take us forward in the di correct direction. Providing yeah, very, very employment and growth. Very, 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 very important point. Nilesh, I think uh, I started this segment with asking about health versus economy or health and economy. And then we moved on to the carrying capacity of Goa. And tourism is one industry which probably de deals with both these aspects and battles with both these aspects. So on both these points, uh, what are your views? Number one, uh, the kind of numbers and the inflow of tourists that we get, are we prepared to handle them from the health point of view as of now because yes now it is proved that there is a second wave we are going down a couple of months later there is a 19 percent chance that the second wave will hit us so if you look at that scenario and number two the in tourism industry is one industry where there were so many unwanted elements that were creeping in okay this reset button probably is the best chance to get those elements out and whether we will be able to get those elements out uh, as I said earlier, uh, COVID is here to stay uh, for some time. And uh, but till the, uh, we get herd immunity or vaccinated, I think it is going to be take some time. And the industry needs to survive. So right now, industry is taking whatever precautions they can take and try to you know uh, get the, build the confidence of the tourism.
tourists back. Because well, let me be very, very clear, unless uh, tourists find confident or the guests find confident coming into Goa, they will not come. They may not, they will not fly unless they fly, the flying is uh, safe. Similarly, they will not stay in the hotel unless uh, they find it that the, where they are staying, it is uh, safe. Uh, so we have to take our precautions and we will have to, you know, enforce certain things and uh, the uh, standard operating procedure which are being defined in each segment will have to be followed strictly by each one of us. Uh, because as you said that um, there, there is a lot of in the medical circle, they are talking about second wave in mid-December. So this is going to be a peak time for us again in the uh, tourism segment. So we'll have to be very uh, precautionary approach and we'll have to take as things come. And somehow we have to survive this epidemic to uh, revive ourselves in uh, months to come. I think this is the best opportunity to implement certain things. Like what we're talking about, there were a lot of small hotels and small apartments which came as uh, uh, in the main uh, industries but started selling through the different platforms available, uh, online platforms available. So the challenge was, you know, they are directly competing with the uh, set hotels or set uh, models of business wherein they are paying the, um, the official uh, what to call commercial rates for water, light, electricity, municipality or panchayats everywhere. And in them compete with the uh, smaller apartments was challenging. So uh, in the with the government when we are talking, uh, so they have come out with the simpler procedure that everybody has to register. So that will help, you know, to get uh, these small, small hotels uh, in main industry and people who don't register, the action has to be taken. We'll know who is genuine and who is not. Absolutely. So what is happening? Small, small guys, they uh, brokers come up and they uh, take three, four hotels and he becomes a. Uh, uh, with the help of touts and everything starts uh, getting the business. So I think that has to be stopped. And even this is the best time to implement certain things like uh, taxi meters. Uh, there is a high court order. There is already once contempt has already uh, gone to the government and the, even the RTO director had to pay the fine. So I think this is the time to implement certain things which are which will go a long way into building the yeah. confidence of the customer. Because let's be very, very clear, customer is not going to come if we are going to operate in the same way or we are going to have a same yes. mindset. We need to change with the time and get back the confidence in the tourist. And it is a, going to be a big challenge. Yeah. Uh, finally, uh, I want everybody, because ultimately we deal with the same political class or the same policy makers. Uh, what is one suggestion that you want to give to the government right now that probably within within next 30 days government needs to act upon it and implement it so that in terms of business in terms of ease things fall back in place i'll start with kirid bhai kirid bhai one suggestion to the lawmakers policy makers government that needs to be done right now there cannot be one suggestion because uh, i have time only for one suggestion that's why i asked for one <laughs> <laughs> so so if you want only one suggestion, then I would certainly say that government has to follow this policy of avoiding any form of excessive indulgence, which means that everybody, government has to put forth that people have to practice restraint. Failing to do so, I think is going to only deepen the crisis and delay the cure, which means that whatever needs to be done by the government to practice this, the government has to do. I mean, there is no one single solution. For this. Uh, Sarah? One suggestion? You know, immediately get the stakeholders um, on board, create a Goa tourism front, and have a right direction to move forward to capitalize on every opportunity that we are getting today. Hmm. I think very, very crucial. Uh, Tejasri, ma'am? Uh, according to me, I feel uh, in the commercial sector, that is basically the taxi sector, some kind of a rebate the government should give these people. Hmm. So, uh, to bounce back and come back in business. Yeah. Very good. Amit? Uh, specifically, we require, like Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu have done, a rebate in the uh, registration and stamp duties, plus some kind of support from the government to the industry like single window clearance and something and rationalize laws implement them strictly and but protect the people who are doing lawful business yeah. anthony 
I, I think I'll go back to my point about you know the projects and um, you know be upfront about projects and what the project is about, what the cost is going to be, what the timeline is for the project. Um, because the, the other point is that you know the, the project starts and there's there's never a completion date which is ever met actually. So I mean I think the whole way projects are handled should should be improved. So yeah, very very important, Sangamba. Yes, Pramod. Uh, if you remember, uh, Prime Minister Modi ji had mentioned the first slogan was "Jahan hai to jahan hai," or "Baad mein bola hai ki jahan hai to jahan bhi or jahan bhi." I would like to say in a single word: "Jahan chalne do, jaan bach jayegi." Agar jahan ban chalne diya, to jaan bach jayegi. You know, uh, it's a weird way of saying it. Uh, forgive my mastery over uh, Hindi for that matter. But I think a uh, government is trying right now to go to the masses, and I think that's the right way to approach. To go to the masses and show the willpower, show the willpower, the political will to uh, and to go through what they want to do it, you know, yeah. uh, and plan scalable projects. Uh, in my sector, for, uh, for one, I think dairy is one thing that is going to have yeah. a very big boom. Uh, but when I mean dairy. I don't want to see the cattle or 20 or 30 uh, cattle on the road uh, every day I drive, you know, uh, but I want to see a big scalable project in dairy coming up and supporting Goa Dairy and Sumul and everybody else. I'm just giving examples. So uh, uh, you go to the masses, educate people and uh, um, make them, convince them how the economy is going to go and the jobs are going to be created without depending on government jobs. Yeah, I think most important the change in psychology that is required. Very true. Nilesh? Uh, in fact, in last uh, four, five months, we have given a lot of representation uh, for relief on different aspects. So what we expect government should do, whatever possible, to see that uh, industry survives in days to come. So as uh, economy will of Goa, which depends on tourism, uh, we start uh, giving revenue to the government and the de overall development of the Goa. So that will be thing. The, the different suggestions which have been given continuously, at least few of them relief measures should be given to the industry. Yeah. Uh, I'll straight away go to Principal Malaya. Ma'am, uh, your closing remark and then I hand it over back to Stessa uh, for the conclusion of the panel. Yeah, ma'am. Tessa will do the formal thanking, but uh, you know I would really like to thank this distinguished panel for sparing time for us, and congratulations to our economics club. Uh, you know I just wanted to say that uh, you know we teach uh, in economics, we teach about fluctuations in economic activity. We teach, we talk to students about business cycles. You know we say how external shocks can trigger either an expansion or a recession. And this is like a live lab for students to see, you know, they can, we are using this in the classroom to tell them, you know, look at what is happening. So, you know, we also teach them about leading sectors, lagging sectors, leading indicators. So we have in this panel, you know, people representing both, for example, agriculture, which does not feel the shock as much. Uh, and you have tourism and uh, you have uh, the automobile sector, which are like the leading sectors, which show you immediately what is happening. So we have been able to see also that, uh, you know, there are segments which have not felt the impact and others which are squeezed by the entire pandemic. So uh, it has been a very uh, educational experience for me and uh, I must thank this panel. I don't feel bad to say that because, you know, we always learn, particularly from the real world. We, as uh, academicians, there is a lot that we need to learn. Also, the second part of the discussion on, uh, you know, the very vexed uh, lives versus livelihood debate, I think has been uh, dealt with uh, very well and a, a matter of deep concern for all the uh, participants, the panelists about, uh, you know, the, the opposition to projects the involvement of you know vested interests in um, all development that is happening you know the positioning debates as being environment and you know going car fund versus others uh, is doing a lot of damage to the state so you know and you spoke about the role of education there um, i'm sure we can uh, you know do our bit to contribute to that to increase awareness and create uh, awareness among our students at least hoping that it will spill over into society. 
Yeah, so once again, I thank the distinguished panelists and uh, please uh, be aware that we will be coming to you again and we look forward to your uh, continued uh, association with Sri Damodar College. Thank you very much and thank you, Pramod, for this initiative. Thanks, 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 thanks a lot, lot for having me. Stressa, over to you. Before we end this session, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to all our panelists, Mr. Amit Chopra, Mr. Kirit Maganlal, Dr. Sangam Kurani, Ms. Tejashri Pai, Mr. Nilesh Shah, Mr. Sarao Francis Sokoro, and Mr. Anthony Gaskell for being with us today and giving us their valuable insights. I also like to uh, thank Mr. Pramod Acharya and Prudent Media for their efforts and contribution. I would also like to place on record my sincere thanks to Mr. Nitin Kunkolekar, the President of Vidavikas Mandal, and the principal of Damodar College, Dr. Preeta Malia, for their constant encouragement and support. COVID-19 has been a nightmare. It has taken a toll on our mental and physical health. People have lost family members, businesses, jobs, and livelihoods. But it has been a wake-up call in more than one way. A wake-up call for humanity as a whole, and most, most importantly, for our economy. It has put a lot of pressure on several institutions in our society, especially the health and business sector, but it has also provided us with many significant lessons. Perhaps it is time for us to re-examine and reassess our outlook on life and our livelihood. So let us work together to make Goa sustainable and prosperous once again. Thank you.